okay, maybe we're going to start. Um, a lot of things uh, to discuss uh, because a lot has happened. Uh, I hope everyone is doing okay after uh, this month of November. Truthfully, I think it's been the toughest month in crypto since I started personally. Uh, it's also been a tough month for pounding, but we're still standing. We're still doing okay. And I think that's all that matters. It shows that the protocol works, that the business works, that it's resilient. So we're going to have to basically uh, start to go from where we are today. Okay. Uh, <coughs> maybe let's start a bit about PAL and tokenomics. Well, the whole market, uh, the token has been going down like everything else, but the metrics are still very strong. If you take, take uh, remove the protocol on liquidity, 78% of the supply is staked and 43% in total uh, is lo locked. So that's good. The, actually, the amount of lockers has been going up even during this downturn. Uh, to be fully transparent, these are things you guys can check on chain. Um, we have 116 lockers right now on the top, uh, on in for a total of something like 690 token holders. Uh, the actual number of token holders has been extremely stable since August. So that's good. It means uh, uh, we have a very strong community that basically holds these tokens. Uh, as we mentioned about the tokenomics, we have reduced the emissions to basically adapt to the market. Uh, they are now almost exclusively all going through Quest, which is a profitable strategy for us. The DAO has been accumulating uh, strategic assets because of that. Um, a few members of the community are working on Warlord. Uh, you guys should expect news on that very soon. And uh, we keep working around the tokenomics to see how we could implement them. So that's it for, token, for the tokenomics. I think the core focus on the short term for PAL in general as a DAO should be to grow its revenue, market share and revenue simply because this is what is going to make the difference. If some people start comparing how much money we earn and what's the valuation of the project, this is the very easy uh, mathematics people can do even in a downturn. So yeah, that's it for Holy Pal. Uh, speaking of revenue, this is uh, the amount of tokens we have made this month. So we've made, uh, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to give the numbers this time. You guys can go back and check it. It's on YouTube. Like, all of this is on June. We we are trying to do the harvests uh, every last day of the month, basically get the most accurate number. There's probably a few more tokens that we have forgotten because we're also getting a, a triple tokens, uh, so stable coins, and SDT a bit of it right now, uh, but they're insignificant compared to all of this. The total is roughly, it's maybe a bit more, uh, something like around $32,500. So it's less than the month of October, but uh, it's also because all of the assets have gone down in price. Uh, I don't think that's such a bad thing because if you look at Curve, uh, Aura, Balancer, Convex, all of these protocols have been have been performing extremely well. So I guess our priority is going to be well to to maximize uh, what we can do with these assets if we do not want to sell them. So that's there's a proposal coming probably in a in a few hours to uh, one or two days on the forums about that, uh, where it will be the right place to discuss. But the main point is we are making money. We have revenue. We have community members also who are working on an API to track all of this and maybe graph it on June. I think this is good because the more uh, transparent we are about this, the more it, uh, it helps us uh, get value and show the value that the DAO is building. So yeah. Um, a big part of the revenue comes from our protocol on liquidity strategy. So what's next? Uh, we're moving our AG Euro liquidity on Uniswap V3. Uh, with a new uh, lucrative strategy we're going to be able to introduce over this month, probably. Another question we've been asking ourselves is whether or not we should deploy liquidity on another chain, maybe something like Polygon. Uh, the idea is that uh, we'd like to be on a cheaper chain for people to be able to trade a bit more, especially people who have very, uh, much smaller uh, bags and who cannot afford the price of gas, which is restrictive, of course. So we'd love to have your opinion on that if some, uh, some of you have a strong opinion against or for that. Uh, and yeah, the goals of the DAO have not changed. Uh, it's still to get a treasury caution, stable treasury for caution for like 18 to 24 months of development, probably by the end of next year. I still think that's very possible. And uh, generate uh, over, 100, uh, over 100K monthly by the end of the year. This might be honestly compromised. I really think we were on track to do that until FTX happened, to be honest, guys. So I guess we will see how how well we fare on uh, on uh, in December. I think it's going to be a much better month than uh, November because there's a few things that uh, are going to enable us to perform better. 
but uh, I don't know if we're able to reach 100k. So yeah. Uh, okay, moving on. So on Warden, um, you'll see there's a few things we don't want to announce yet. You're going to hear a lot of uh, Warden uh, starting early next month. Uh, there's actually two products that are going to be built on Warden that are going to be released. So initially, we wanted people from the community or external people to build it, but we've realized we're maybe a bit too small for people to want to build on Palin yet, at least not as much as we want. So we had to do part of it ourselves. We have something called Pledged, which, uh, which I'm not going to go into detail, but finishes audit. And then uh, we're currently auditing another product, uh, which uh, you guys, uh, I think, will like a lot. And uh, that we already have good traction uh, from uh, current customers and some uh, partners uh, that are interested in it. So uh, expect Warden Boost to look very different in the next quarter. Speaking of looking differently, um, well, we've talked about quests. November was a very good month for quests. Uh, there was quite a few quests uh, going on. Uh, there's a bit less right now simply because, uh, for example, Liquidity had a two-month deal with us and now they're done. They realized that they could use more efficiently uh, than uh, simply incentivizing on Curve. So at least right now, so we're still in talks with them to uh, uh, look a bit at what could be done, what they're interested in. They will pro most probably come back in a different manner. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, we've had a very good fill rate of our, of our quest with the exception of one uh, week where basically Inverse Finance asked for a lot of votes and blacklisted all of the different wrappers. So it was extremely hard to find all of these votes just with the VCRV layer. We're still working with them, discussing on how we could make all of this process better. Basically, every single quest we're getting gives us more data points to enable us to do our job better. So this is what is tremendously exciting for us. In December, you should expect a lot more quests, maybe on the bouncer side of things. At least that's what we're hoping, as well as a few comebacks on the curve side. So yeah, that's about it um, for what's happening with Quest. It is our leading product. 99% of our revenue is now coming from Quest right now. Uh, I think it's going to be the case for December too. Then January, February, we'll see. There's going to be a few curveballs around that. But yeah, speaking of uh, new UX, uh, we are launching a new UX for Quest. That's the first thing. From what we have learned, what we have talked, we're very grateful for from everyone's feedback. And I know a lot of you here today have given us feedback for that. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we're going to keep making that UX better. We're going to keep. Uh, um, basically uh, making the product better. Uh, if you see uh, some new bright products, you will some of them will look a lot like our old UX. Well, the good news is that we have a new UX that's coming up. Well, you should expect it probably for next round. Uh, I don't want to give a definitive date, but uh, that's, wh that's what we're aiming to do. It's much easier to, to understand. It's going to show you which tokens uh, uh, can be voted in directly. And uh, yeah, I hope you will like it. And there's a few more uh, UX questions we're still working on that you'll see later on. But Quest is getting a beauty, a beauty uh, revamp. That's about it for Quest. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're really happy about that. And I think it's going to be a very much easier to use. Uh, another thing we've been working a lot is our delegation address. So right now we have a very basic algorithm to control, uh, to optimize the reward. Uh, right now, uh, we're still working on it, but I think it's going to become very interesting because uh, we haven't published it yet. But the yield difference between delegating to us and delegating to another address has been much uh, much stronger than we than uh, yeah. It's a, we're we're actually making a good amount of money with our delegation address, more for the people who have delegated to us. So we're going to have to keep pushing for this. We haven't had the time to spend enough to do it. Uh, we're going to keep doing it because. Uh, I think it's a very powerful tool to push quests. So yeah, uh, last product. We have hinted at it last time. We won't do a grand reveal yet, uh, but Paladin Landing is going to transition from uh, the vaults that you have seen up until now to a new kind of vault for Ave. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have more to tell you about this uh, next uh, next month. For those who have found what this was last round, congratulations, uh, you got a hint. If not, uh, keep looking. Okay. Um, I hope I'm not uh, going too fast today. I'm sorry. I'm, I happen to be a bit sick too. But uh, we had we didn't have a lot of governance process last month. 
Uh, I think that the FTX fallout also, also explains uh, well, uh, why we weren't as active. Almost all projects were more in the risk management mode than uh, active governance mode. Uh, we are slowly getting back into this. The demon has posted the Paladin framework orbit for governance. I highly, highly advise you have a look at it to free to add things if there's anything missing. Uh, we posted something for our protocol and liquidity strategy to renew it because it has been very successful. And you see, a few, you you should see a few more updates very soon. Uh, one for our treasury updates and one that's going to be a bit more controversial. Uh, that uh, if you guys want to talk about today, we're open about this. Uh, we've realized that uh, some protocols were taking inspiration, sometimes hard inspiration from our code, and. Um, if we want Paladin to keep having a mode to being able to keep being able to attract a revenue, uh, at some point we're going to have to change the way uh, we treat our coding license, the license uh, around the IP that that's owned by the DAO. So there's two steps we're going. First, we're starting to try to uh, find a way to incorporate the DAO one way or another, so it has legal precedence. Uh, we started consulting with lawyers to understand. Until we'll have a full uh, comprehension of every opportunity we have, we will create a very large proposal to, for the community to decide what direction they want to take. And the second thing uh, we're going to have, uh, which is going to be sooner, is we want to change the coding license uh, for all the code that was built on Paladin that's owned by the DAO. The idea would be, <coughs> right now we're fully open source and we'd like to move to a license that looks a bit more like um, what Uniswap or Aave have been moving to, which is what we call a business license. Um, the code is fully viewable, fully usable. People can go and play around with it. Uh, if they want to upgrade it, if they want to modify it, they can. The only thing they can do is just straight up, straight up tell, uh, take it or modify it very, very little and then uh, monetize it. So basically, the idea is that you create a, a mode around the fact that the team has built a strong code with very innovative features and that if you want to use exactly the same thing to do exactly the uh, the same code to do exactly the same thing, you should pay the DAO to do so. Or at least you should go in and ask them. And the idea is this code uh, will be, this uh, is basically for every new code, it lasts for two years and then it becomes open source and anyone can do whatever they want with it. So this is entirely up to the DAO to choose. We're going to release a proposal once we finish, the, uh, finish checking all of the licenses out. I think it's very important to discuss about it. Honestly, I didn't think we need to go there, but uh, now that we have experiences, we understand why Aave, why Uniswap has, has have have used these techniques. It's it's necessary if you want to create a moat and keep it because uh, we have six engineers right now in the team, and uh, we cannot expect them to work huge hours like they're doing to to push to their maximum to find new innovative me uh, mechanism. If uh, then uh, uh, any very market uh, marketing oriented team comes in, takes the idea and just markets it better because they don't have to focus on R and D, right? So I think this is a big question we're going to have to ask ourselves as a DAO. Yeah. And feel free to, if you have questions about this, uh, if you have doubts, uh, we're always here if you want to, if you have questions and if you want to share them. Um, okay. So this is exactly the same slide as last month. I'm not going to lie. Our focus has not changed. Uh, we are aware uh, when entering the last quarter of the month of the year that uh, we would be uh, entering uh, more of a smaller, less public, uh, uh, less released focused uh, quarter. Simply because, uh, well, there's a lot of things that we need to keep building. So we're trying to, we're still trying to grow Quest a lot. We're working on our Boost product. We're working on a new uh, Stake Ave Vault, and uh, we are discussing heavily with the World Lord team to make this happen. And yeah, that's. Honestly, already quite a lot. Uh, Starny, do you want to take it away on the Brotherhood? Yep. Thank you. Um, yep, thank you. Uh, so, um, starting today, and as you can have seen on Twitter with the announcement tweet, uh, the first Brotherhood uh, campaign called Christmas Campaign begins. So, uh, in a quick resume for every, everyone here, uh, I invite you to read the rules channel in the Brotherhood section uh, of the Discord and uh, join the Brotherhood. Uh, you will earn honors according to your activism with like, RT, uh, uh, write threads, create memes, etc. And you'll be, you will be rewarded if you are in the podium. 
Uh, you can also read more about the Brotherhood campaign on the Keep blog with the link uh, you can see uh, uh, below on the slide. And uh, I hope you guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, nice. I hope you guys will enjoy the initiative, and we are really happy to see you people uh, to see people joining the campaign. So don't hesitate to ask uh, your question about the Brotherhood during the MA session at the end of the community call or in the Templar chat on Discord. Uh, next slide. Okay, <clears throat> as you might know, our governance proposal discussion are both on Discord and Discourses, and we are exploring the possibility of using uh, Commonwealth as a channel for proposal and governance discussions. Um, as you can see with this, with this table, uh, table yeah, every possibility uh, has their pro and cons, uh, and since the community is in the center of the governance, it's normal, uh, normal to listen your opinions. That's why I want you to share your truth. Uh, so let's discuss about it during the MA session two in a few slide, slides. Um, yeah. uh, office hours are still in place. Um, just ask for a call in the office hours channel on Discord. We'll book a chat with Paladin core team. It can be one by one or in a small group. It will be in a private chat or voice channel uh, with invite on leave or privacy. So feel free to, to ask for, for a call. Next slide. Okay, uh, for Pops, uh, if you are in this call, uh, I just took a screenshot. So you will receive a Pope soon for being part of the community call. Um, there will be a longer delay uh, that the, than the previous uh, times, but uh, be sure that you will receive a pop uh, in a few days. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, so we can start with the MA session. Um, yep, yeah, I can take the first question uh, that Didi Moon say. He think that a British term could be a good place for liquidity on uh, ship chain two. I don't know if you can you want to talk about it, uh, Figi. Mm, so, uh, we've been in contact with the Optimism team, with Arbitrum team, with the Polygon team. I agree, uh, I'm a very big fan of Arbitrum. Uh, the reason why I'm more interested uh, in Polygon than Arbitrum, Arbitrum is a project, it's, a, it's basically becoming the derivatives chain, right? Polygon is much more, I don't want to say DeFi native, but it has a broader community. There's also a lot of trading projects that are on there. Uh, so where with whom we could potentially partner and uh, I am not sure for example balancer is on arbitrum uh, because if we were to move for example our balance balancer liquidity there uh, I think they're on polygon so we could basically just use exactly the same setup and keep creating quests and directing liquidity there so I don't know it's, uh, this is very much uh, a working progress like we have no idea where we're going with this for now uh, I would like us to have a broader plan. Uh, we also know the Polygon team has been ask is asking us for quite a while uh, when we were doing starting to do something on Polygon. Uh, but until now, it has not been dependent on us. We're waiting on Balancer and Curve to basically make moves on, uh, on their multi-chain strategy. But yeah, we're, this is something we're certainly looking at. So right now, it, we're really just talking about PAL, uh, at least in the context we're discussing. Ideally, at some point, we you'll be able um, to use probably the boost products on Polygon and other chains. Ideally, it depends on more on these protocols deploying boost than us. Uh, for Quest, the, the biggest problem about Quest is that you have to vote on chain on Ethereum. And that's why, at least in the short term future, on for Curve and for and for uh, Bouncer, there's a very little chance uh, we we see at least in the next two in the next few years something outside of uh, of Ethereum, at least for these protocols. Any other questions? You mentioned that you were considering building a tool for more visibility. Okay. Now I think he's talking about uh, something uh, Big Guy is working on with a ah. few committee member. Uh, I think he's working with Didi Moon and we skip it. Uh, the idea is that we'd like to have a dashboard while people in the community can follow the emissions 
and follow the revenue of the DAO. At least that's what is in uh, the works, to my knowledge. Uh, do you want to complete this, uh, Bega? Yep, I can elaborate. Uh, I'm sorry for the noise in the background, but yeah, I can elaborate a bit. So we uh, actually we had a meeting today with uh, both uh, uh, Didi and Kipi to talk a bit about the how it was going. Um, I think it will be ready for uh, if not next week, the the week after. And yeah, we we want to cover basically every metrics regarding volume, fees, and revenues for uh, the various like stakeholder of quest which means like participants voters and quest creators and and also we are looking to um, extend the the dashboards to uh, paladin landing uh, which requires like different computations and this is the part we are currently go working on yeah so for the chat uh Adrian was asking uh, whether the tokens earned by the DAO were dumped for stablecoins or whether we were holding them. Right now, we have been holding them simply because there was no governance proposal to make something else happen. Uh, if you, some of you think we should at some point, please uh, do feel free to write a proposal. Uh, we're thinking about making assets, and that's the main topic of uh, the next proposal on Treasury, making assets like CRV, CVX, Aura, and BAL. Uh, some kind of strategic assets, uh, uh, probably for World or two at some point. Uh, and the idea would be that we can lock them and use them as floor liquidity in our own products, which I think would be very synergetic and we'd be able to get uh, to get revenue on top from this. So that's something to explore with, with this. All the other tokens, uh, I think at some point we'll have to sell them for, for a runway, basically, or for more operations. Um... Yeah, thank you, Stefan. <laughs> well, we we are in a good financial health. Uh, health just by itself a bit less, but that's also because it's very cold and very uh, uh, winter is not nice. Uh, okay, guys, any other questions? Uh, again, this is the best time to ask. So everything is recorded as always, so we can put them back on YouTube. And uh, if you have other questions, you can ask them whenever on the Discord. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Hope I don't know where you can. Well, no, you can buy it on the markets. That's why. Uh, okay, guys. Any other? If if not, uh, I wish you all a very good month of December. Uh, next community call will probably happen early mid January, so it's the last one of the year. Uh, we don't want to bother the community end of December or uh, where when everyone will be uh, having their Christmas holidays. We'll still be working. Uh, our big. Uh, uh, after the UX that you have seen, uh, we're basically doing one one more quest release before the end of the year, and then uh, we'll be working more on to R and D to prepare for the month of January, January or February, where you should expect us release some things, but you should also expect a lot of other products uh, releasing stuff because a lot of projects have been delaying their release because of what happened with FTX and they're pushing back to early January probably. Oh. Uh, and uh, speaking of Tony, uh, uh, good world or update uh, uh, in January. So we are not the ones working on Warlord, so I can't give you any more data on it. Uh, so a few people <laughs> reading this message probably <laughs> are laughing uh, seeing that. Uh, hopefully you should expect a world update update uh, before January. And yes, no more no more teasing. But uh, we thought it was very important to show you guys that we are still working, we're still there. Uh, because uh, for some projects, the silence has been deafening over the past month. This is very not, mu not much the case with us. We're doing well, and we want, we want to do better. Okay, guys, uh, have a nice month of December. Enjoy the holidays, and uh, see you soon.